Five years ago, I made one of my favorite personal projects. A functional audio project that involved 3D printing, minimal electronics, and no battery. I was wondering if this device still works five years later. I also want to build a new version and compare how it sounds. So let's dust it off, set it up, and take a look at my old 3D printed AM radio. These simple radios have other names like crystal or foxhole radio, and normally they're built from household items, but I was happy to see my 3D printed design was shared online by Make Magazine, and other YouTube channels, and other online posts. And if you're like me, you might enjoy learning how something like this works, so let me explain AM radio and how this can function without a battery. A radio wave is an electromagnetic wave that oscillates back and forth. That speed is measured in a unit called hertz, which just means how many times it went back and forth in one second. This wave has a frequency of 8 hertz, and an AM radio tower will broadcast this consistent frequency, but convert the recorded audio into micro intensities, which holds that audio data and is added to this carrier wave. So the amplitude is changing or modulating, and that's why they call it AM, amplitude modulation. An AM radio broadcasts in frequencies from 540 to 1700,000 Hz, and the waves are received as alternating current that flips directions back and forth, but we can convert this into direct current using a diode, which only allows current to flow in one direction, which cuts that wave in half, creating electrical pulses that can vibrate a speaker. And the force that these towers broadcast that signal can be strong enough to vibrate a low voltage speaker to hear that audio without a battery. And here is that diode that I'll be using, and you can see it acts like a normal wire completing the circuit and turning on the LED. But what happens when we turn that same diode around is the current is blocked. It's like a one-way street preventing the current from flowing. So every diode is marked with this direction, but for this project, either direction will work fine since it cuts the AC wave in half creating a direct current. Alright, I've got the antenna unraveled, I've got the ground wire connected to the kitchen sink just like my previous YouTube video, and you can hear with this earphone, but in order for you to hear it, I need to amplify it. But again, what you hear can be very faintly heard without the amp in a very quiet room. I'm going to move the foil around, which adjusts the length of the wire, and it finds those different frequencies. And we are definitely detecting something, but no real stations. Something must have changed after five years in storage. After taking a closer look, I now see the once clean copper wires are coated with a layer of dark oxidation, which could be blocking the current from flowing. I first want to burn the ends of the wire with fire, since copper doesn't burn, but the fire can help remove any impurities or buildup. But note that heat transfers super fast through the wire, so don't burn your hands like me. Next up is the sandpaper, and it's starting to look a little bit better. And finally, I tried scraping the wire with a blade. I also heard that a combination of salt and vinegar can help to clean up the copper too. And there's the shiny wire that I remember seeing. I have to be very careful when cleaning the coil of the wire, since I don't want to remove too much of the enamel and end up shorting out the whole wire. Now this paper clip might have been the worst judging by the amount of residue left on the sandpaper. And maybe I should be calling this a sand sponge, it's not really sandpaper, but either way I'll probably need to buy a new one after this. Looks just like new, but does it work any better? Alright, there are some times I can hear a station. I would say it's improved, but I remember it sounding better 5 years ago, so I was thinking it would be fun to try to make a brand new one. Let's start with the same 3D printed file, and let's print it on a higher setting and with my new 3D printer. Ah, man, I'm out of foil, but I do see this bubblegum wrapper. I think this should work as a good replacement since it's also conductive. And I picked this new enamel wire fresh this morning, and the wire gauge standard is a little confusing to me since smaller numbers are actually a larger diameter. And I remember the wire sliding around on the plastic, so this time I'm going to try adding double-sided tape. So let the turning begin. It's a lot of turns. But just remember, through the power of editing, you can simply jump to halfway through, and then before you know it, you can jump to finally being done. With editing, it's just as simple as that. Lightly sand off a very small section of the enamel. Now we can connect the 3D printed parts. Clip and bend over the wire like this. And we can use these springs as wire connectors since they're conductive. At least I hope these new ones are conductive. Uh, yes, okay, they are conductive. And they should fit perfectly into place. Remove the enamel on the ends of the wire and add the diode. Make sure to grab a magic paper clip right from the air. And thankfully, paper clips are also conductive. 
and it fits in the 3D print just like this and connects to the first spring with the spare wire. And it needs to use this type of earphone since it's a very low voltage piezo. And I'm gonna fold the bubblegum wrapper and connect it like this. And I'm not gonna lie, this looks pretty cool to me. I think it's got a great style. Okay, let me just make a quick montage. <laughs> Alright, that'll do. Moving on. Let's connect the ground wire to the sink and test it out. I'm getting some positive signals, but to make it louder, I switch to my larger amp. And of course, I don't want to record too much of the radio broadcast, but I just want to show you for this educational project that it is working. And here you can see exactly how important this diode is. Now we can actually make our own diode with a safety pin, pencil, and razor blade. We just need to add a layer of oxide by heating up the blade until the steel turns blue. And it is more difficult to use this instead of the manufactured diode, but you can see it is working and allowing current to flow in only one direction. And I just really like this project, I don't know why, but it makes me happy, and I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun revisiting it, and I just want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.